Hello again, this time welcome to another math lesson on uh, calculus, this time specifically drawing cubic polynomials. What on earth am I talking about? Okay, let's just remind ourselves what is a cubic polynomial? Well, a polynomial is uh, this expression where we get different uh, multiple terms and these different terms have different uh, um, powers for x okay so the cubic polynomial has cubic the highest power is a 3 then in writing it in lower or in decreasing order would be look like this okay and then the last one would obviously be x to the power 0 which is just 1 and then these have coefficients so let's call this coefficient a uh, let's call it a b c and d now since this one's x to the power of one this is what a cubic polynomial would look like and um, why are we doing cubic polynomials at this point after we've just done the derivative well the reason why is because the cubic polynomial is uh, it's very necessary in the cubic polynomial to find its turning points and for you to better understand that let me just briefly go back to the one order less in other words the graph of the parabola that's the quadratic polynomial so in other words ax squared plus bx plus c now what happens when we take this one's derivative this one's derivative multiply the 2 to the front is 2ax and the 1 multiplying the b plus b and x to the power of 0 multiplied in front there which is b0 so there's no additional term to this so this is the derivative for the parabola function okay or the quadratic function now let's quickly have a look at how did we go about to draw this to draw the parabola what we did was we found three things we found its intercepts with the first we found its direction so is it positive or negative in other words did it look like this okay or did it look like this okay and that was completely determined by a a decided which direction it showed then we wanted to know where on the graph does it actually fit where does it cut the x-axis we found the x x uh, x intercepts by making so let's write it down like this okay to find the x-intercepts we made fx equal sorry yeah fx equal to zero in other words this expression was made equal to zero why because this is where f of x is equal to 0 on this line is everywhere where y is equal to 0 so if I make y equal to 0 and I solve this equation I get two values for x and those would be so I get two answers for x and they are my two roots okay so now I know determining determined by the side where I actually uh, cut my x-axis and I know now in which direction it is but um, and also what I did was to find the y-intercept to find the y-intercept probably the easiest of it all we made x equal to 0 okay I can even eliminate that so when x is equal to 0 we just had c so c is the y-intercept okay but then we had another critical point so these are all called critical points I had another critical point called the turning point and the turning point we had to first find the symmetry line that is this the center line the center line is exactly halfway between the two intercepts so one way you could have found it was to say well take x1 plus x2 and divide it the two intercepts by 2 and then you have the symmetry axis and uh, this let's call that P Okay, so this could be P and once I have P I can find the place where it turns so I know it turns somewhere on this line so let's say it turns there as an example then that point that Y value we'll call Q and the way we found that Y value Q was to substitute P 
p into f into my original function to substitute it into f so f of p now another way of finding the turning point okay well let's just was with this this formula so p also had another formula negative b over 2a okay now there's many ways to show that that is the formula i want to show you the simplest way to understand it based on our understanding of calculus okay if there's anything you should walk away f with for my lessons on calculus it's that the derivative it's the most important thing i think the derivative is a formula for the gradient okay so if I look at the turning point that's now the turning point what is the gradient at that point well if someone were to stand at this top point right here he would be standing perfectly horizontal he would not be upwards or downwards he would literally be standing on on a uh, horizontal slope which means the gradient at that point is zero so if I had a formula for the gradient which I do I could equal that formula to zero so now my question would be what would the x value be when the gradient is zero well we just solve for x so here we have the equation that we need to solve 2x sorry 2ax plus b must equal zero so 2ax must equal negative b that means that if we divide both sides with a 2a that's where my formula comes from isn't that simple okay so if x is equal to negative b over 2a 2 times a x plus b will equal 0 but this is a formula for the gradient so when x is equal to that f value the gradient will equal 0 and that is how I can very quickly find the turning point for my parabola so let's say they give you a parabola okay, here we go f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 7 and you have to find the turning point well that is finding the derivative 2 times is 4x minus 3 okay see 2 times a is 2 times uh, 2 is 4 plus b in this case is negative 3 so minus 3 and then we make that equal to 0 and we solve for x okay so we solve for x we get x as 3 over 4 okay that is the p value in other words the symmetry line where I will turn and um, at what point how high above or below that line I will turn I will have to calculate by taking f of 3 over 4 Now I'm not going to go into that all you do is you substitute it in here and you get an answer the answer you get to that turning point why I'm not going into that is so that I can get to actually the cubic polynomials because all of this stays the same nothing is changing we need our critical points which are these three sets of points first we are going to in this case it's actually easier to just find these points and then decide what is the shape and we'll look at the shape in just a minute okay so how will we find the x-intercepts well easy we'll make it equal to zero and solve the equation so then we'll have a cubic equation okay well let me stop talking and start writing okay so drawing quick cubic drawing a cubic polynomial okay let me so we need our critical points our critical points okay so the easiest critical point to find is the y-intercept the y-intercept and for any absolutely any any uh, function I just make x equal to 0 okay so that one is so simple if I look at my cubic polynomial would now look like some, something like this ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus 
D. So if all of these x's get a 0, then my y-intercept will just always be 0 for x, and whatever this constant number is there, that will be my y-intercept. Okay, that one, simple. Let's look at the next one, the x-intercepts the x-intercepts remember for x-intercept we'll make f of x equal to zero very simple and this is th literally the steps you will take to draw this okay so we make our x-intercept equal to zero when we do make that what do we get we get a x cubed plus b x squared plus c x plus d must equal zero here you see we are trying to solve a cubic uh, equation to solve a cubic equation I have to first find one zero okay so here's the steps I find one zero okay how do I find one zero well we look at the factors of D okay so for example D is 12 then we say okay what are all the numbers that would give me 12 it's one time one uh, or all the factors of 12 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 okay and then I'm going to try plus and minus each one of these plus and minus each one of these until I actually get 0 okay plus and minus 1 substituted in there and once I get that so I find 1 0 and let's call that one then R1 then I know that X minus R1 is one of the factors it's actually one of the roots as well and then what will be left in here would be now some expression let's call uh, whatever this is this is going to be a quadratic quadratic expression how do I find this quadratic expression well I find it using long division okay algebraic algebraic long division that's how I find my quadratic equation I'm still all equaling to zero and once I have a quadratic expression finding or, or changing this into two brackets is ridiculously easy okay that's not a problem as well we know that uh, very well by now so we'll have an x minus r2 x minus r3 uh, so here we have three factors Okay, once I have three factors, I know that x is going to be r1, or x is going to be r2, or x is going to be r, well, x is equal to r3. So I'm going to get three answers, which are going to be three roots. Okay, so let's just go and draw a little bit what we have so far. So far, my graph is going to touch cut the x-axis at three points r1 r2 and r3 now in order for a graph to cut in three points it means that if it's cutting here it's it's doing something like this now if it has to cut here again it means it has to go up come down and cut there again and then at some point it has to turn up again so this is one example of the shape that it might have. Another example is just the opposite of this. In other words, it wasn't going... So this one you see goes up, down, up. Okay, it ends up going upwards. But another example can be first it goes down, up, down. Okay, can look like that. These are two shapes. So there's two shapes that we can have. Either a shape like this or a shape like this now I like to think of it as as the capital N either looks that's a capital N or an upside down capital N okay so that that's how I like to think about the shape but now you'll notice that the reason why I showed you the uh, quadratic polynomial first is because you see here we also have turning points if I'm going up and I have to come down again at some point I have to turn around to do that okay same here we have two turning points Okay, and this time it's not so easy. These two turning points are not necessarily exactly in the middle between between here. So how do we find those turning points? Well, the only way to do well, the only way I know to do it is actually to recognize that these are the points where the derivative 
is equal to zero. Okay, not the derivative, the gradient is equal to zero. So if those are the points where the gradient is equal to zero, that's where the derivative is equal to zero. Now, if the gradient is equal to zero, we must find, so for our turning points, that's the third critical point, we make the derivative equal to zero. Okay, and in this case, the derivative of this expression That expression would be, finding the derivative here, would be 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c plus 0, which I'm not going to write. Now look at this. Forget about what exactly comes in front of this expression here. Okay. All, all you know is that a is some number, so 3 times a is another number, but it's just a number in front of the x squared, okay, so, and there's another 2b, is just a number in front of the x, this is a quadratic, a quadratic expression, it's quadratic, so if I go down here, if I make the derivative equal to 0, and I've got 3ax squared plus uh, 2bx plus c equal to 0. If I solve for x, I will get two answers for x. x1, okay, and I'm going to call that p. So x is either going to be p1 or x is going to be p2. Now, obviously, depending on which one is bigger and which one is smaller, one would be p1, the other one would be p2. But that just tells me the line where it is going to turn on. It doesn't tell me the exact coordinate. So how do we find the exact coordinate? Everything remains the same. If I know the x value and I want to find the y value, I must use my formula for y. What's my formula for y? Well, that's my formula for y. f of x is equal to y. So if I know the x value, I must just substitute it into the original. So how do I find Q, Q is simply, Q1 is simply putting in this turning axis into my original function, and for Q2, obviously exactly the same. Substituting that into Q, sorry, not, yeah, that should be a P, P2 into my original function. And there I have it. So that gives me these coordinates, Q2 and Q1. And uh, that's really, as, that's as simple as it gets. Maybe I can make two more comments though. One comment is, what if I cannot find, if this quadratic expression does not factorize into two brackets? Okay, what that would mean is I would only be able to find one root. Okay. What would that graph look like if I only have one root? Well, is it possible for the cubic function to cut the x-axis only once? Yes. For example, I go up, I turn, and then I come down to cut the axis again, but before I cut the axis, I turn upwards again. So, I can have one root. Is it possible to have no roots? Well, no. You either have to go up, and you have to start somewhere, so either going up and at some point you're going to cut the x-axis, or you're going to go downwards. This is the opposite shape, having only one root. Okay, This is the negative shape, and that is the positive shape. Okay, And uh, how will I know which shape I get? Well, it all depends on the coefficient x cubed. That. If a is positive, I'll have this shape. And if a is negative, I'll have this shape. No, this shape. There we go. Okay, upside down in. Okay, um, is it possible for me to have, it's possible to have only one root. Is it possible to have only two roots instead of three roots? Well, yes. Okay, if any one of these three brackets are repeated by another bracket. So, if, for example, if at some point I've got x minus r1 squared, so there's two brackets that look exactly the same, x minus r2, then yes. So what would that graph look like? Okay. 
Well, that graph would look like this. It would go up, cut once, come down, cut again, but this time turn right on the axis and then go up again. So this time my second is, this is actually called a, a multiple order root. Okay, so um, I've only got two intercepts. Okay, and those are the three possibilities. I can have one root, I can have two roots, and I can have three roots. So one way you can just look at it is imagine I have this one right here. How can I force this one to have more roots? Well, I just need to bring it down. How do I bring it down? Well, you just change its y-intercept. How do I change its y-intercept? Well, its y-intercept is just d. Okay. So if I add more or I subtract more, that will move my graph up and down, and that will force it to have more than one root. Okay. So... there would only be one thing left that I would want to tell you about this but I'll do that in the next video where I'll be talking about the second the second derivative of the cubic expression and what does the second derivative stand for I'll see you in that lesson